Hey guys, Skyler here. So this is not a typical setup. Um, I bought a cheapo folding desk off of Amazon. It's like, like the Amazon Basics. It was on sale for like $50 out of 75, so I decided to get it. Anyways, I figured I would do a video of how, or rather what I use to film my videos. Uh, partly gonna be difficult because I can't show everything because well, my camera's in use, my mic's in use, and then my ring light's in use. But uh, we'll start with my actual camera, which I unfortunately can't show. I could, I couldn't start B-roll to show it, but like, it's, it's the, oh, oh, there's a foot bar. Well, not a foot bar, it's a support bar, but my feet can sit on it. <laughs> Derailed. Uh, anyways, things are falling. Uh, I use a Sony a7 III, I think it came out like, what, 2017 or something, maybe 2018? I think it was 17. Uh, just because I wanted a decent 4K camera, but I didn't want to spend like so much money. Only downside is I did buy mine quite literally, I think like a month before the a7C came out, which would have been nicer because then I would have had the flip out screen. Uh, however, for me, I like having the extra custom buttons, the extra SD card slot, so that kind of outweighed the pros of the flip out screen for me, because that would have been the only benefit. Because uh, otherwise I paid, I think 1600 for my camera on Spotbot, and like a new 7C is like 1800 or 2000 or something. Uh, something like that. Uh, so right now I do have the Ket lens, which is a 28 to 70 basic uh, lens, so it's a 3.5 to 5.6. And then I also have a Samyang 24 Prime 2.8, although the back cap doesn't stay on correctly, because uh, with the Samyang there's also another, which is Tamran. Uh, they're the same literal company, they're just like different parts of the world. So when I bought this, it had, it, it's like, it's a Samyang, like it has a, the branding, but then the bottom was the Tamran, because logic, but it doesn't sit on the mount very well, but if I put this on my kit lens, it sits perfectly. It's really weird. Um, and I'll be honest, part of why I bought this specific one is it comes with a case, <laughs> which is really nice for traveling, so I do enjoy that. Uh, and then for my mic, I do have a, I believe it's the Rode Mic Go. So that's what I use just for basic going for lenses and lenses. This is not entertaining. Um, however, when I am vlogging or if I'm filming without my laptop or a laptop nearby, I do have this little cam camera. It's a little mirror from Urig. So basically, because there isn't a flip-out screen, you can just put this into your hot shoe, and it does have mounts on the top and two on the side, so one here, one here. So at least it doesn't take up your mount. And it's just a, a mirror, so it can reflect your screen. It's not perfect because honestly, the screen on the a7 III is absolute garbage, even if you have it to, like, to full brightness. So, Sometimes it's really easy to overexpose yourself if you don't use like, I think the zebras or whatever, which I don't use. I know, I'm really naughty, I should do that, but I'm not. I'm better at photography than videography, so, you know. But it would probably help if I got better at that. And also better at even trying to color grade. <laughs> than opposed to just like, let me move a few things around and make it look like I did something. But yeah, so I do use this just when I don't have a monitor nearby or whatnot, uh, which is what I'm doing right now. I actually have my laptop over here. I have it hooked into a USB-C cable. I'm actually using the one that came with my laptop, the charging cable, just because the a7 III does have a USB-C port. I do prefer to use that over the USB or micro USB B, just because it's like I don't, I only have the little tiny charging cable that came with it. And I have literally none else. I don't have a long one. I'm not gonna go buy a long one. So I just use the USB-C port because it can work for hooking it to computer for monitoring. You can use it for charging. You can use it for streaming and stuff. So it's like, I am also just stick to USB-C. It's just easier. Uh, and then when I do have it hooked up to like a laptop, which can be Mac or Windows, in my case, I am using my Mac. 
uh, which has a little quirk. If you, for some reason, have any kind of storage device up or app like uh, Google Drive, for example, it uh, literally won't start the app. So Sony does have the free Imaging Edge app, which allows you to um, basically edit things. You can edit photos and whatnot. You can use Remote View, which is what I'm doing, so it will let you see what the camera is seeing. You can adjust all your settings. You can start filming, stop filming. Um, I do believe you can do pictures through here too. If you want to manually press the button over here, it does work. So moving on from there, um, I do sometimes use my iPhone as a secondary camera, in which case I do have like a Joby tripod that sometimes I'll use my a7 III on if I'm just like vlogging, or I will connect my phone to it. And I have a lot of phone mounts. This one's my favorite. It actually came with a tripod I'll show in a second that I got specifically for my phone, but it folds and then, you know, the usual extending. I like this because it's a lot better than the one that's just like big and chunky or it feels like it's gonna break because it's like a thin piece of metal or something. So I love that for this reason because I can just fold it up and then thought big and chunky and it does the job. And then this goes with this trap over here. I could, I honestly, it's pretty sturdy. I could probably put like a smaller vlogging camera on here or something, but this is by, I'm going to say it wrong, but Ubisize, if I can remember, I'll put some stuff in the description down below. I do have like my lenses and camera and stuff linked in my description, like every video, but if I can remember some other stuff, I'll do that. But yeah, this is just for, for smaller things and it's where this came in, but it has varying heights, which is nice. There's three different heights you can go to, locking, and it's great. I prefer to use it just like tabletop. Can I like, hold on, let me like loosen it. So freak out. It's just, it's just, it's a nice little tabletop. And I'm just gonna lock it up. And then my other tripod is from Targus. I've had this for a very long time. I bought this, I think, oh geez. I want to say like 2012 when, no, it was, it was 2011. I was in, it was freshman year of college and I, I know that my high school photography teacher not watch this, thank God. Um, so I borrowed a tripod from my high school photography teacher. So I didn't have one and I needed it for photography in freshman year because it was just an elective and I'm like, this is a relaxing class and it, it covers like a, an arts requirement for my degree. So I had to have um, one art class so I did photography and I'm like, you know, that's exciting. And I borrowed a tripod from him and he's like, okay, bring it back. So I like I did a lot of nightscapes and my college for freshman year anyways was on the ocean and I went down to a rocky area to take some pictures, like some nightscapes and a wave kind of crashed to the rocks unexpectedly. Like I didn't realize how far in the water was and it splashed up, knocked over the tripod. Um, my camera wasn't on it yet, thankfully. I was like in the process of setting up, so yay, camera was safe. But the tripod uh, got pulled out to the water and uh, never saw it again. So then I went and bought this one, uh, which is kind of nice. Still very, very basic. I probably paid like 20 bucks or something for it. But, you know, it has a pretty evenly moving head, different like locking positions, quick release, which is great. It does have two levels, one here and then one back here. So you can level the legs, level, level the camera, which is nice. But yeah, I've had this for a while. It has a little carrying handle, which is nice. It has the hook, which a lot of them do have. And then varying heights for the legs. And of course, for, well, let me like this. There we go. For that too. So it's like, you can get a lot of heights and angles pretty easily, which is nice. So yeah, that's that tripod. And then sometimes when I am filming, uh, especially if I'm using my phone, uh, since I do use the remote app for my camera, I will sometimes take pictures of my phone if I need to do like thumbnails thing, I remember. Uh, so my tripod I bought specifically for my phone did come with a little like basic, you know, Bluetooth remote. And then I have another one that I don't 
know when or where I acquired this. Oh, I take it back. I know nowhere. It came with my, my ring light, which I'll mention in a second. But yeah, these are kind of nice because you can just snap some pictures. I wish they had the ability to like start a filming, but that's more... That's far more than just hooking up by Bluetooth and accessing the picture section. So that's kind of nice. So that way I don't have to like be shaky and shadow. I'm really bad at like keeping my shadow out of pictures. <laughs> uh, and before I forget, also basic setup, I do have a dummy battery. So it has a basic like power block, which I'm not gonna take out because it's like every other power block in the world. But basically this is a little dummy battery that tricks your camera into thinking there is a battery in there the whole time. So you can just have it continuously on. I use it more so for streaming, just because when you're streaming, I'm just doing an HDMI out or USB out like in webcam mode. So there isn't the recording limit, of course. So this is really helpful. Downside is the a7 III does get very hot when you let it record for extended times, even if it's not in 4K. So I will say if you do tend to use a dummy battery, make sure the screen on the back is lifted away. And honestly, sometimes I'll leave the battery door open too, just because that way the heat has a couple different areas to really escape because of the Battery door's closed and the screen's up against the body. It just traps heat. So not so good. So good option, really helpful. Now if I do upgrade, I don't think, I don't think the, the new A7 IV has the same battery. If it does, cool. Cause then I can not worry about it. And I can use a dummy battery, but I don't think so. I know the A7C has this battery so this would be great for that i may potentially pick up an a7c just to have a second camera because i do want to start uh streaming baking streams on twitch and then it'd be nice to have a second camera for like baking videos and stuff or just videos like this honestly like a top down would have been nice but we don't got that all right oh you know what i totally forgot because i haven't gotten i haven't used this one once i bought a variable nd filter uh, which basically just helps darken the lens so there's not too much light when you're filming outside. Um, it's been okay so far. It's from K and F Concepts. Like, it feels nice. It's, you know, it feels durable, I guess. I don't like the feel of it. It's like that rough, tacky material, which I mean, it's kind of nice when you need to be able to grip it. Uh, it worked pretty well. I did use it for my Bronco video, which should I be up? Uh, however, since I'm not the greatest still at exposures, I probably didn't use this to its maximum potential. This is a cheaper ND filter, but I haven't had a problem. The only issue is, which the reviews didn't really mention, is sometimes you can get like this X shape, and that's just from not having it lined up, because there are little dots here. I don't know how I can see them. Hold on, let me like block my face out. There we go. There's little dots that or like your min and max and different levels of how dark you want it to be. So this is a two to 400, ND two to 400. So it's not like a super big variety, but it for me, it does the job pretty well. Um, so lighting, lighting is fun. I'm very terrible at it. I think part of why I'm so bad at making videos is just I don't put the effort in to make the shot look as good as it could. But then again, there's plenty of like people who are making videos getting tons of views who don't have the greatest lighting. It's personality is pretty important, obviously. But I have a newer ring light, and it's literally the newer, newer ring light, which is great because it has a lovely remote and a touch screen. Uh, and both remote and the touch screen will show the like brightness level, which is one to a hundred. And then it'll also give me a temperature. So right now I think I have this at like 5,500 Kelvin. I think it goes up to 5,600. And I don't remember how low it goes, I'll be honest, but I can like link it down below. But it's just nice because my generic soft boxes, which have a um, Bluetooth light bulb, also has a remote with temperature setting. Although this one doesn't have like the actual temperature readout or anything, it's just lighting. So I kind of basically have to put the two side by side and then go until the light matches. So a little frustrating there. But it's still nice that I can control both from wherever I'm standing, and they have pretty decent range. 
Uh, downside of my lights is that this will control more than one light bulb, which is annoying because it's just a Bluetooth light bulb. So as long as it's the brand that uses this remote, or maybe it doesn't really matter. I don't know. I only have just the one generic or set, I guess, generic set. So basically it's like, when I'm trying to fix the color up, sometimes I will do one at a time and leave only one on and one off because for some reason, sometimes with my, my uh, soft boxes, they'll turn on different colors, different like temperatures, and I don't know why. But then if I set them to the right one and then turn them off, as long as they're plugged in, they'll stay at whatever temp I have them set up if I turn them on and off and on and off and etc. So when I unplug it, it just like resets it to a random temperature. Don't know why, but I only paid what did I pay for those lights? It definitely wasn't more than like 75, I don't think. I'll, I'll put everything down below, but the ring light, I did splurge. I think I paid like 130 for it, but it was worth it because of the extras, which is like the screen and the remote and whatnot. Cause the other newer was just like, uh, it was, you know, high and low. You just, you just kept hitting it until it got to a thing. And the problem is once you turn it off or unplug it, it just, reset because it was a, oh it was a dial not plug it was a dial so yeah meanwhile this one because it does have a remote once i set the temperature and brightness level it stays even if i unplug it so it's like it's great so when i'm streaming i can keep it set to one temp which i love what else do i have anything else i guess my lights i have a uh, hue bulbs as well as some generic ones over here like this is just a generic ge one which is controlled by a generic remote. So you can control like a bunch of these, like I have this one here and then I've, where's it? Yeah, this one up here. Where is it? Hold on, right, right here, there we go. Like looking behind. So this one and this one are both GE. So I have one remote that controls both of them. I have these set to purple because they are just like the 10 color type things or is it four, 10 or eight? Is it? It might be eight color. No, it's 10 colors. It is 10 colors. But the problem is they're very like not saturated colors. So I just keep it on purple because it's like this kind of like on camera, it's kind of whitish in there, which is nice. And when I'm streaming, it's kind of whitish. It just, it's like a good filling. And then back here and here I have hues lights, which obviously are expensive. They're like 40 to $45 a bulb, depending on where you get them. I do love them because I can control them with my phone and the Hughes app. Um, and then if I'm actually using my razor blade laptop when I'm filming, I can control it through the razor like control station, which is kind of nice. So I do enjoy that because then I can change the colors if I need to. And it's just a nice color in the background. Obviously it's kind of dull right now as I'm filming, but I'll try to punch in some color. I'm trying to get better at making it look nice. <laughs> I might just need a lot, that might be helpful. Anyways, I'm gonna end it here because I don't know what the timing I'm at. This is gonna be a pain in the butt to edit. I didn't follow the script that I have like sitting over here. I have like a little script prompt, like propped up <laughs> against my water bottle <laughs> and a notepad. I followed none of it, uh, which is literally the order of how I want to introduce all the items and talk about them. So we love that. Anyways, see ya.